Hello, new section today, but the mathematical contents will not be new. It will be recycled from the previous videos of this chapter. And in fact, uh, let me remind you of the main message of this chapter, which has been, if you have a linear map from V to W, you can represent this linear map as a matrix. And what does that mean? It means that um, there is a matrix for the map H such that if you multiply this matrix with the representation of the vector V, of a vector V from the domain, then you obtain h of v, or rather a representation of h of v. Um, yeah, so now I've um, suppressed the bases that are at play. So we represent v with respect to a basis of the input space or domain space v and h of v with respect to the co-domain space d and the representation of the linear map is also with respect to these spaces b and d respectively. And again the point is that rather than application of h to v we now have matrix vector multiplication. What we are doing today is we are looking at the special case of H, the map H, being the identity map. You might think, okay, that's going to be trivial because then as representation we are going to get the identity matrix. Well, that's not always true. So let's do things slowly. So if we do, if we take as H the identity map, what is true is that then as co-domain space we must have the same vector space V. And in, then of course for H of V we can simply write V itself. But what we are left with is still not completely trivial because we might still have different bases for the vector space V the bases B and D might actually be different. And now what, uh, what we have on the slide is still telling us something. Namely, it's telling us that we can convert the representation of V with respect to B to a representation of the same vector with respect to a different basis D by multiplying with this matrix. And correspondingly, we are going to view this matrix as a change of basis matrix from B to D. This is what we are zooming in today. So changing representations of vectors with respect to different bases. Example R3. Here's a random vector from R3. We take the standard basis and this basis. Now representing the vector v with respect to the standard basis gives us the vector v itself because it's a standard basis. And uh, with respect to b, we have a different representation. Let's check it. We should be able to write v with respect to the basis b by zero times the first basis vector plus two times the second one plus one times the third one. And I think that checks out. And yes, yeah, so in this section or in this talk we are going to look at how we go from this representation to this representation.
applying the previous program, we already know how to do this. So we take the basis vectors from B. They are beta 1 up to beta n. We put them through our map, which is now the identity map and represent the result, so the beta i themselves, with respect to the new basis d. And this gives us some vectors, and we put these vectors as columns in our representation matrix. And uh, what is actually defined here is not the things here, they are already old. What is just defined in this definition is this term, change of basis matrix. So we are now going to call the representation of the identity map with respect to the basis B and D. We are going to call this a change of basis matrix for basis B and D. And then again using um, the previous things we arrive at this equality so in order to go from a representation with respect to B to a representation with respect to D, we simply multiply with this matrix. And then the lemma also says, if left multiplication by a matrix M changes basis in this way from B to D, then M is a change of basis matrix. So then M has the form um, that is described in this definition. Again an example, let's look at polynomials of degree at most 2. Here's a basis, here's another basis. We are interested in this change of basis matrix and we can compute it by representing the old basis elements with respect to the new basis. We've done this um, often. Let's just check the last thing. So 1 plus x plus x squared should be 0 times the first new basis element. Okay, that's going to be 0. Okay, 0 times x squared minus 1 plus 1 times x plus 1 times x squared plus 1 and that really gives us 1 plus x plus x squared so that's correct and then we take these columns and use them as columns of our change of basis matrix and now for example if we have this polynomial and uh, we represent it with respect to basis B in this way, that could be easily checked, then we can move to a representation with respect to D by multiplying with the change of basis matrix that we have just calculated. A matrix changes basis if and only if it is non-singular. Okay, so if you have a change of basis matrix, then it must be non-singular and vice versa. If you have any non-singular matrix, you can view it as a matrix, as a change of basis matrix. This gives you yet another characterization of non-singularity of matrices. For an illustration of the proof, let's focus on the backwards direction, i.e. if you have a non-singular matrix M, then we want to view it as a change of basis matrix. Well, if it is non-singular, it can be decomposed into a product of elementary reduction matrices. We talked about this in the previous videos. These matrices Ri reflect steps of Gaussian elimination. And uh, now we show that each of the Ri changes basis. Okay, so for an illustration, let's take this Ri, which reflects a Gaussian elimination step that says add to row 3 minus 4 times row 1. And now we want to view it as a change of 
basis matrix. So we consider what it does to a generic vector R1, R2, R3. And we would view this vector as a representation of some vector with respect to some generic basis B. Okay, so far everything is uh, without any loss of generality. The only thing we have to check is that we can view this vector as the representation of the same vector V with respect to uh, a new basis. Okay, so first of all, this vector V, if it has these coordinates with respect to B, then we must have that V is R1 beta 1 plus R2 beta 2 plus R3 beta 3. And now how do we view this vector as the representation with respect to a new basis? Well, it's already given away here. So here is the proposed new basis. And is this vector really the representation of V with respect to the new basis? Well, you can just check. You multiply this out and then you indeed get V. So you can see that you have obtained a representation with respect to the new basis. Well, actually, is B hat really an a basis uh, for the same vector space. Yes, you have to check that B and B hat span the same vector space. That's routine by now, I think. And similarly, verifying that the um, vectors in B hat are linearly independent, assuming that these vectors are linearly independent. That's also routine by now. We arrive at this Corollary, a matrix is non-singular if and only if it represents the identity map with respect to some pair of bases. Actually, um, you can now or you could now solve exercise questions that go like this. So I give you an arbitrary non-singular matrix. Um, and then I tell you, for example, Mm, we want to view this as a change of basis vector, a change of basis matrix that changes basis from which basis to the standard basis. So I could ask about, so what is the proper B such that H is a change of basis matrix? And I could also ask the other way around. So um, please view H as a change of basis matrix from, from the standard basis to, um, to some basis. And uh, please find D. Think about it. Um, the first question is, simpler to answer if you are given H.